Good afternoon. This is James Berger with Off the Press, our political talk show here at the Bakersfield Californian. And I'm joined today, as always, by my hosts, Nicole Parra and Russell Johnson, uh, politi- former uh, politicians and political uh, observers and uh, extraordinaire. And our, but more importantly, our guest today is Lee Vasquez, yes. candidate for Area 2 in the Kern High School District. Yes, and uh, thanks for being on the show. It, with us, my pleasure. it's fantastic. My pleasure. Looking forward to talking to you. And uh, it's a great chance for us to get to know you and uh, a little bit more. And I think Nicole knows your family, but uh, I know nothing about you other than you used to be principal at, at East High. So tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and uh, a little bit about why you're running. And, and Lee, fair warning, you got to talk right into the right microphone. Into the microphone. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I come from a long line of uh, a long family of educators, and we have a long history of community service and volunteerism here in, in Kern County in, in Bakersfield. Uh, Area 2 is, is where I was uh, born, raised, and educated. And so uh, my, my mother and father have instilled in us always this idea of, of community service. Uh, my mother and father, Alex Vasquez, Virginia Vasquez, were both board members around 50 years ago of the Fairfax uh, uh, Virginia Avenue schools. And so you know, back then, 50 years ago, that's pretty impressive to see a, a lady and a, and a, a you know, Hispanic male uh, being board members of a school district. Uh, mm-hmm. They were also instrumental in creating the uh, Fairfax uh, Junior Baseball Club. I don't know okay. if you're familiar with that. Mm-hmm. Not. Thousands and thousands of kids every summer go through that program, and, and we were all there helping <laughs> all during our lives. My brother is uh, or was the one of the counselors at uh, Highland High School. Okay. My sister. Uh, uh, Suzanne Hernandez was a, a teacher at College Heights, so we've all been on the on the east side. It is our it is our home. Uh, me, my family, and I we've spent a lifetime, you know, in education and community service, and so uh, it's it's just natural for for us to give back. Uh, my brother is giving back, uh, uh, volunteering for one of the hospitals here. My sister's taking care of her grandbabies, and me, you know, it's I'm, I have some time, and I think I can devote some time to this position. All right, good. And and uh, what uh, tell us a little about growing up. You obviously you grew up in a family of edu- educators. Uh, uh, whereabouts in the the east side, and uh, and kind of what was your your back? What was your growing up like? You know, uh, we were uh, just regular old kids. Uh, went to Fairfax Junior High. We used to call ourselves Fairfax Dirt Kids because that's all there was out there. <laughs> dirt. Uh, graduated there. Went to Foothill. I graduated from Foothill, went to BC, okay. graduated from uh, BC with an AA in anthropology, and uh, uh, continued on to San Francisco State and University of Laverne. Uh, and growing up on the east side, you never knew uh, we didn't have a big family because the whole neighborhood was your family, really. And it was very, uh, it was a very good time to, to grow up. We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, we weren't uh, wealthy. My mom was a uh, uh, a nurse's assistant at a, a nurse's assistant at a, a rest home, and my father is a house painter. Uh, never knew uh, how good we had it, uh, and so growing up on the east side, great people, and I continue to believe that there are great people out there. Good deal. So, Lee, it's it's interesting to hear you talk about East Bakersfield, uh, and uh, you may not know this, but my former boss was. Kern County Supervisor Mike Maggard, mm-hmm. and actually you're running against uh, his chief of staff, Jeff Flores, right, who right. he and I go way back. He was actually in my wedding. That's how mm-hmm. close yeah. of friends we are. So um, I want to make sure uh, that's out there so everyone knows. But, you know, Supervisor Maggard also affectionately refers to East Bakersfield in the same way you kind of just did, because he grew up, I think the west, the furthest west he got may have been like something like Tulare Street or something he talks about. But uh for the folks that grew up in East Bakersfield in that in that time frame, they really have an affection for East Bakersfield, right, right. and there's a charm there. Right. What is it that made you? Um, do you still live on East Bakersfield? Yes, I do. You still live on yes. that side of town. Yes. What is it that made you stay on that side of town? That made you kind of fall in love with it and not go too far from home, so to speak. Well, full disclosure, Mike and I went to high school together, so uh, <laughs> you know, I've known so, him for so quite a while. So you knew him when he had the mustache. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, handsome yeah. mustache yeah. it was, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, he has it again now. He's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's great. Great guy, too, I tell you. you know. And that's the kind of kind of people that grew up on the, the east side. You know, you, you, you think about the east side and you think, oh, you know, there's a lot of negative connotations about the east side, but a lot of good people continue to grow up uh, and come from the east side. Uh, and it was just, it was always felt like a family. Uh, we knew each other. We could go to their houses and, and you know, be out late and come back home and our parents knew we were okay. 
it, it's a little different now. It is. But I tell you, the people are the same. They, they want a quality education for their kids, just like we did back then. They want a good life for their kids, just like we did back then. And, and it continues to be that, that part of my life that I want to stick, stick around with. And so I, I, I feel very comfortable being uh, you know, on the east side and, and representing the east side. You mentioned you went to, uh, I think it was San Francisco State. Yes, sir. Home of the Gators. And then you, and then you got your, um, I'm assuming your teaching credential from University of Laverne no, or no, your I, master's. Or? I, I, I received my master's okay. uh, in school counseling from Laverne and also my uh, administrative credentials. Okay. So tell me, you you then had a long career as an administrator at East Bakersfield High, right? Mm-hmm. As an administrator in the Kern High School District, over yeah. 26 years. What, t- tell me about that part of your story. 26 years in the district. You probably have a lot of history. You know a lot of the p- people that are there. Some of the people have left and moved mm-hmm. on. What, g- give me some of that, that story and that timeline. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, in this instance, uh, running for the, the board, being an insider is a good thing. Uh, I have been with the district uh, since, gosh, 1985 uh, and became an administrator in 1990. And just seeing how the district has evolved over the years and how it's grown over the years, it's just been amazing and, and how we've kept pace with that growth. Uh, being a, a young administrator, uh, prior to coming into education, I was in private industry though. I, might, you know, I started education late uh, and, and coming into education was just, gosh, it was, it was the most fun I've ever had working. Um, I got to coach. I got to coach football, I got to be a counselor, and then as an administrator and being part of the growth of the Kern High School District, major part of the growth of the Kern High School District, uh, I had an opportunity to open Centennial High School. Oh, really? Uh, Went to the district office as a director, uh, then uh, was a principal at South High School, uh, and then, you know, ended my career as a principal at East High. And so just going through all of those uh, steps has really given me a perspective that perhaps no one else has. Uh, And that perspective is that we do a pretty good job at the Kern High School District offering a quality education to our kids. And I want to, you know, I want to continue that. Sometimes it gets lost in all the politics, uh, but what we do well is we educate kids. So you're the one to blame for bringing the uh, Centennial Chicken Hawks, as we call them, when I was at Stockdale High School. Uh, uh, and as a former football now, coach, now. this is probably your favorite time of year because it. it's football it. time. It's football and, season, buddy. And now, where'd and you coach? Were you coaching I at coached, South? I coached or, at East High School East? when I first started. Yes, okay. East High School. I was coaching the Frost Soft team and uh, the Junior Varsity team, and we were both uh, at that time uh, league champions. I'm bragging now. Oh, you know, right. but, uh, yeah, we, we had great athletes, great kids, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. And, you know, it's still that. Uh, you know, kids love the rivalries. You know, there's mm-hmm. a big rivalry now between Highland and <laughs> East and Foothill and, you know, Miramonte and all these schools, you know, and uh, uh, that's still there. That's still there. And, and, and students, they, they, you know, they have those experiences that we had, mm-hmm. and they're still quality experiences, and they're still fun. And uh, I still like going to football games on Friday nights, basketball games, uh, wrestling tournaments, uh, oh, yeah. you know, uh, band competitions, um, uh, you name it. And it's just fun. And it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's a great place to be, really, to, to be able to go and check out all that stuff. You know, I, I just appreciate football season. And you, I remember when I was playing at Stockdale, man, we lived for Friday night. Oh, Everything gosh, we did yes, revolved yes. around Friday night. Yes. So it's an exciting time of year. Yeah. And um, no, that's a, that's exciting. I didn't know you were a football coach. And yeah. That's yeah. I think that's uh, that's uh, that's important because you were able to get in there. And some of my most important role models were some of my football coaches. Do you have any standout students you remember that you mentored uh, when you were coaching? Well, uh, not necessarily that I mentored when I was coaching, but one of the standout students I always re- re- recall is Andre. Andre uh, Gonzalez. Yes, yeah. Andre Gonzalez. And uh, what a great kid and uh, always has been uh, just a, a neat person, you know. And uh, all the, the, the students that, uh, there's just so many. You know, you wonder, well, which ones were the standouts? And, you know, when you get to my years as, a, as an educator, you forget all the names. Uh, so you call them Mija or Mijo, you know, and then you get away with it. You get away with it. But uh, uh, it is... Uh, uh, you know, you just think of Andre as, as that kind of kid that every school gets. Mm-hmm. You know, every school gets those type of kids. And we're just really blessed in this community to have uh, good parents and quality, quality comprehensive high schools. 
Mm-hmm. Are you still pretty close with Andre? And I, I see him, yeah, every <laughs> once in a while. Not as much, you know. Right. He's a pretty busy guy, but uh, every time I see him, I give him a hug. He gives me a hug, mm-hmm. and he's just a nice, that kind of guy. Nice, mm-hmm. nice guy. And he's on his own personal journey running for office. Amen. Yes, he and, is. Uh, and uh, might uh, see you know. some of your flyers with. Uh, I'm like trying to piggyback on his, maybe somewhere <laughs> right. there. He's a little more connected. I guess, did, you know? did, did you great. did you ever think you would be on the ballot running for office with one of your former students? Not at all. At the same Not time, isn't that you exciting? Know, it though? is. It is yeah. uh, amazing. Uh, uh, I thought I was just, you know, when I became a counselor, I died and gone to heaven. That was mm-hmm. the best job in the world, and and I still think it is. It's just wonderful how you can work with kids and, and communicate with kids. Uh, but the best job in the current high school district is, is being a teacher. Mm-hmm. And our teachers are just wonderful. They, they're hardworking young men and women and old men and women too. But uh, uh, that, is, that is the best place to be is in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so now you obviously have taught, you spent time in the classroom and you were serving as an administrator. And you look at this now, and here you are. You're kind of um, retired now, and you're you're looking at it. And you're, what? Why did you decide to say, I'm going to go back to the current high school district? What was what was it that brought you back to run right now? Well, my official retirement date is in December. Okay, so, so I'm still, still working employed. for okay. the current high school district. Uh, a little awkward, but uh, you know, I feel that that I have so much to offer in in this arena because I've been in this arena for so long. Uh, thank God I still feel healthy. I got a very supportive wife. Uh, you know, my friends have really been uh, stepping up and, and supporting us. And uh, it, it's, it's, it feels right. And, uh, you know, I just keep hearing my mom's voice and my dad's voice in the back of my mind saying, you know, we got to give back wherever you go. Because I'd gone to San Francisco to, you know, to go to school. Wherever you go, you got to give back. And, and I tell my students that all the time, wherever you go, give back. And, uh, and always remember, you know, always remember Bakersfield. That's your home, mm-hmm. you know, and you'll always be part of this family. So obviously you're running for a seat that's not open. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it, are, are you doing that um, because you see uh, a need to, to have better representation? Or are you doing it just simply because this is your home? And this is the time for you to do this. Right. At pretty much a little bit of both. Um, I don't think anyone knows Area 2 better than I. I used to, to go to the football games on Friday nights, Foothill East, uh, you know, West High. It, it was the same back then as you described earlier. Uh, it was just, it was, it was home. And my, my knowledge of, of what's happening on the east side, I don't think anyone comes to the table with that. And so... Uh, you know, I felt that this was a good time, and uh, I'm going to have some time on my hands uh, being able to devote that time to students and to the current high school district. I, I thought was that was pretty pretty special. So I talked to some friends. We talked, you know, you might have noticed that I, I registered the last day because we hadn't really made that decision yet. And, right. uh, uh, again, it was just my – my mom and my dad's voice in the back of my mind saying, you can do this, you know, go, try it. So here I am. And I think that we, we offer a different perspective. We offer uh, a knowledge, again, that, that no one else has, and uh, an energy, I think, that hasn't been seen in a long time. Uh, uh, you talk to people about Lee Vasquez, and they say, that guy's always rolling. He's always moving, <laughs> you know, so. Okay. Well, I didn't want to get into um, the campaign yet, so mm-hmm. I just want to talk to you about when you were principal at East Bakersfield, um, what were some of the issues as a principal that you saw that you um, may take um, if you're elected to the Kern High School District? What would be a couple of those things since you were really inside in the high school as a principal? And right. were you there with the modernization of yes. East Bakersfield? Yes. And obviously yes. through all of that, and my of father, that. obviously East High, yeah. we would drive by EB and he just, the pride uh, mm-hmm. that we, he would have to see everything that you all did um, right. with the modernization and with the students' achievement. Right. Uh, I was also had a little bit of my hand in the South High modernization, too. If you drive by South, uh, what a beautiful campus that is. Uh, East High School, uh, John Gibson initiated the, the modernization, and we saw it to, uh, to completion. And, and it's just a beautiful campus. You drive by it now, there's no other campus that looks like East right. Bakersfield High School. Now, I say that because I'm a little biased, but uh, mm-hmm. it is a beautiful campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And so, yeah, we did have a little bit to do with that, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, you know, some of the issues out there, though, I, you know, I, I really believe in class size reduction. I really believe the smaller class sizes are, are better. We had a, the Quia grant at East High School, and uh, with that, we were able to, to uh, bring class size down a little bit, and we saw our uh, significant rise in the, uh, the, the scores that our kids have. So, you know, crowding is going to be an issue with the Kern High School District in the future, and that's something that needs to be addressed here soon. And and I believe that uh, uh, that's one of them. The, the obviously we're talking about you know suspensions and expulsions an awful lot now. Uh, I think we do a much better job with suspensions and expulsions right now because of our PBIS program, MTSS program. We um, we're much better at accommodating kids who are struggling and much better at, at reaching out to kids who are at risk. And, and we get better every day. We don't have an answer yet. I don't think any school across the nation has an answer, but, but we are really approaching it uh, with our eyes wide open and trying to do the very best that we can with it. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned that the district is growing and that they need more space and you happen to have a bond on the ballot uh, <laughs> this election too. So no doubt it's, it's gonna become a campaign issue. Um, what is your thought on the school bond? Do you think it's adequate enough? Do you think it should be bigger? Are you going to support it? You know, it, I think it's going to be a critical issue as we're heading into November. Yeah. What, what is your thought on that? Our projection at the district was that it would it would be a bigger amount of money that we would need, but you know, they have done a wonderful job in in, in determining what the needs really were, and we've gotten it down to where we're all right now. Uh, I believe that the district, though. You know, historically, if we look at the current high school district, we've been very good stewards of the public money. We have been very good uh, with with our promises, saying that we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to build schools here, and then we follow through with them. I think the current high school district has always done that, and I think we'll continue to do that. Uh, this growth is real. Uh, it's not stopping. It's continuing, and so we have to be prepared for it. The, the district has always been very progressive in its view on on how to handle growth, uh, and and has been very prudent in its uh, approach to to building buildings and and modernization uh, for for the older schools. Uh, I think the public should should understand that we're going to continue to do that, and that. You know, if I'm in there, that I will make certain that that I, we continue to do that, and I'm certain that the other, the rest of the board members feel the same way. Though, mm -hmm. you know, we we know the numbers, and uh, we know that this is real, uh, and this money, I think, the bond money will be spent according to what the district says. I think we can trust them there. Okay, uh, we got to take a break, <laughs> but uh, it was a good, uh, a lot of good information there. More to come with Lee Vasquez, uh, and we will be right back with off the press.